for today's video, we're going to be installing these Malone Airflow 2 crossbars on the 2022 Subaru Outback Wilderness. So yeah, let's go ahead and get this thing unboxed. I'll show you guys exactly what's inside. All right, guys, so here we have it. These are the 50 inch crossbars from Malone. And depending on the length that you go with, it's mainly personal preference. I didn't want the bars to stick out too far out this way, the width of it. And so I went with the 50 inch, but I probably could have gone longer. But as you guys can see right there, the next size up is 58 and then 65, which might be a little too long for the setup that I want. The dynamic or working capacity of these bars are 165 pounds. So that means you'll be able to transport anything that's under 165 pounds safely using these crossbars. I've seen a few folks running these exact bars with a roof tent and it seems to be just fine, but I'd rather be on the safe side and get something that's higher rated, but the choice is yours. So I'm typically not a fan of anything that's universal or whatever is labeled universal, but according to the reviews, this one specifically from Malone is a decent crossbar system at a fraction of the cost as some of the ones that's on the market. And before I get any further, if you guys are new to the channel, my name is Ron. Uh, I typically work on my WRX, but for today, we're going to be working on the Outback Wilderness. So if you're new, welcome here. Thank you for tuning in. Let's get started on today's video. All right, so in the box, you get the lightweight crossbars, the rubber inserts that we'll be using for the backside of this after we get it installed. Four of these towers. And the cool thing about them is that they have locks. So they actually have a locking mechanism. That way you can deter theft. And the reason I say deter is because if someone wants something bad enough, they'll be able to take it. So nice feature of these crossbars, by the way. And then lastly, you have four of these end caps that go on the end of each crossbar and a set of instructions. All right, so I wanted to do a quick overview of the clamps. Uh, you'll see that they all have locks, but two of these, which are labeled A, have the tool, the Allen key that you need so to gain access to the tool, you get your key, and it comes with two, by the way. Insert it, and then go ahead and unlock, and it should come out that way. So this is what you'll need to be able to tighten these clamps down. And I think this is just a five millimeter Allen wrench. And you just simply tighten it that way, turn it clockwise to tighten it, and then counterclockwise to loosen it up. And to put it back, you simply just stick it through there and then lock it up and it should be good. So these clamps have these rubber pieces right here. And these are the ones that clamp onto your roof bar so that it doesn't get scratched. These are there. And actually, I want to take out these rubber pieces and show you how to put it back together just because during shipping, sometimes these can get pulled off and wouldn't want to leave you guys hanging on how to install this. So let's just... Pull this apart. Just like that. Put it back together. Make sure it's flush in there. And then this piece. Just like that. So again, if you knock it out, that's how you put the rubber pieces back on. All right, so let's go ahead and install the clamp onto the actual bar. And again, you guys remember I mentioned that two of these come with the tool right there, and then two of them are blank. I'm gonna use one on each crossbar, if that makes sense. So let's go ahead and get this thing popped on here. And it's gonna be weird, but the thicker side is intended for the front of the vehicle and then it just kind of tapers towards the back. So this is always gonna be facing the front. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is to go ahead and remove the cover and loosen it up. Make, just make sure it's loose enough. And you could use this tool right here that they include, but I prefer to use my own. So I'm just gonna be using a five millimeter Allen key, and then I'm gonna finish it off with this because I don't want to over tighten it. So I just want to make sure it's tight enough just right. So I'm going to use this as well. But yeah, after we get the door cover off, go ahead and just slide this through. And real quick, if it gets stuck like that, 
you can go ahead and push up on this bolt right here and that should move that part right there where the tab is. And so that should allow you to slide it through just like that. And in order to prevent this thing from sliding off when you're installing it to your roof, you wanna go ahead and get this end cap and install it. It opens from the top, by the way, just like that. And then you can't get enough leverage with your thumb to push that tab in. Just go ahead and use a tool or anything to push it down so that you can slide it in. There you go. And then you just do the same thing for the other side. All right, so now we're ready to install it onto the railings. You wanna make sure that the crossbars are at least 24 inches apart. I'm gonna install the clamp right here in this section for the back and then over here for the front. And as you guys can see, that's well beyond 24 inches, so we should be good to go on that part. All right, so you wanna make sure that your clamps are big enough to go around the railing. You wanna go ahead and take your crossbar and place it on top. Do not tilt this because the clamps could still come off and it'll damage your roof. Make sure it's leveled when you're balancing it onto the railing like so. And again, the thinner side is facing towards the back, thicker is on the front. All right, so I'm gonna do a quick measure just to get this thing centered and to make sure that it's the same on the other side. All right, so I think we're in a good position here. So I measured four inches right here, this distance, and then two inches of overhang and it's pretty much the same on the other side. So before we tighten it, I'm looking at the instructions right here. Just make sure that it is even with the railing itself. You don't want the front side of it going over and you don't want the back side of it as well too high off of the railing because it'll come off. So just make sure it's level just like that right there where my index finger is. So let's go ahead and tighten this thing. Again, you can use the tool that's included. I'm gonna use my electric one right here so it's faster, but I will finish it off with the ratchet. And like I said, I didn't want to over tighten it. So I'm going to use this right here just to kind of get a feeling of where we're at. And be very careful if you're using one of these not to hit the paint. I mean, it's pretty obvious, but just be careful. And actually, if you don't have a ratchet, then go ahead and use this tool that's included. Just be careful not to drop it, obviously. And essentially what you're doing when you're tightening this is you're bringing the other side closer to the edge so that it locks in place. Okay, I think that's good. So it's tight on there. I don't wanna over tighten it and risk breaking something, but this feels like a good point to stop. And I actually measured three inches on each side. I know I said two, but I pre-measured and it was three. So just keep that in mind, three inches of overhang on each side. All right, so after you've tightened that, and you can do the uh, shake test. Yeah, it's not moving or anything. You can go ahead and insert these back in there so that they lock. And then just do the same for the other side and then we'll get the front bar installed. All right, so we're over here at the front. Again, I'm gonna mount it right here in the middle of this section right here. Again, just be very careful. Make sure that it is balanced and you're putting it on the railings. I'm actually standing on a stool just so I'm able to see what I'm doing. So once it's in the center, I can roughly see the other side. It looks pretty balanced. Go ahead and just tighten it up slightly and then do the same for the other side. Not all the way though. Once you got your final placement and it's sturdy on there, do the shake test, go ahead and finish up the install by closing it up. And that should do it. All right, so after you get the bars installed, the last thing to do is to measure, cut, and then install those rubber inserts right there. But I do wanna point out something. So if you guys can see from here, it looks like the back has more overhang than the front. And I don't know if it's because the railings on the outback kind of flare out towards the front, but that's the way it is according to the crossbar length. So just pointing that out, it's not a big deal, but you can definitely tell that there's more overhang in the rear compared to the front right there. So anyway, let's go ahead and finish up the install. 
I'm gonna go ahead and measure and then cut this thing up and then push it in and we should be done. All right, so for the front, I'm getting a measurement of around 34 and a half inches. So we'll go ahead and measure and then trim it down some more if needed. And I'm gonna actually use one of these cutters Perfect, so let's go ahead and uh, push this in. This might be a little difficult. All right guys, so I just finished the install of the Airflow 2 crossbars by Malone. Overall, it was a pretty simple install. The only frustrating part, I'm sure you guys know by now, are these um, rubber inserts that you're supposed to insert on the bottom of the crossbar. So I read the instructions. These don't impact the integrity of the bar or anything like that. All they're used for is for wind noise. So you may hear a little bit of uh, wind noise or a little more wind noise if you don't install the rubber inserts, but these were a pain to install. I had to push as hard as I could just to get that to sit in the groove properly. But yeah, I, I don't want to do that again. I almost just took off the entire setup just so I can measure and then insert them that way since they have grooves in them. But yeah, this was a pain to install. So be ready for that whenever you're installing this crossbar setup. But yeah, so far so good. Um, I like the fitment of it. I like the looks of it. And like I said, I didn't get the longer crossbars because I didn't want too much overhang when it came to the sides right here. So I think this is a perfect amount. And so far everything is flush. If you guys can see right there, everything is neatly laid on to the railing. And I think it looks good. So just looking at it from this angle so you guys can get a good visual. Do a quick walk around. There we go. Yeah, these things are solid, especially for the price. Can't go wrong with these ones. They look great. Zoom out a little bit so you guys can see the full, full car. Go. And like I said, the overhang isn't too bad. Yeah, it's pretty flush all in all. And yeah, so that's about it. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one.